Okay. Oh, we're being live streamed. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to night number two of La Ronde, our revival. Um, we have a wonderful cast and we have a wonderful team. I'm so ah, I'm just so excited that we're back to live streaming again. What a delight. Cheers to Kay Aloha Peterson for making this happen. Kay Aloha, thank you. Yeah. Um, no, but seriously though, huge thank you to him because now we can, um, expand, you know, people don't have to just kind of hop on the zoom. They can watch on Facebook, which is great. Um, anyway, no, I'm really excited for tonight. A uh, little bit of business next week. We're going to be doing fences by August Wilson. So please join us then. Um, and the rest of the summer, we got a pretty good, we got some stuff lined up. I won't announce what it is quite, quite yet, but, uh, keep watching us and, uh, Yes, yes, I know. I did not make the announcement yet that we were doing fences to the group. So this was a this was a drop. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. Sorry, I'm a little bit like nervous because I'm about to read. So I without further ado, um, oh, before I mm, this live stream, this is we're gonna edit this in post. Um, there's gonna be no intermission. We're just gonna run the two hours. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. Oh, wait content warning. I knew I was forgetting something. It's been a long day. It's been a long, like 72 hours. Um, this particular reading, while we are doing everything very tastefully, uh, there's a couple of things I do want to point out. Number one, everything that you're going to see is all the characters. It's all consensual. Um, number two, this is on the verge of like very PG-13 rated R, just given the thematics. If you know what Laurent is about, it is basically um, uh, everyone's sexual relationships with each other, character A to character B, B to C, et cetera, et cetera. Again, nothing is shown on screen. Everything is very tastefully done. Everything is consensual. However, I do have to give that warning just because I don't know who's watching this. And if you for whatever reason have this on and you have a family that maybe this is not ideal, uh, for them to watch, you know, tune in when we do like The Odd Couple or Monsters, Inc. or something more family oriented. Um, but maybe not this one. But anyway, um, I think that's it. Fences, the content one. Yep, that's it. All right, everybody. Have a great show. Thank you again to the cast. Thank you again to the team. Thank you again to you for watching. And may I present LaRond. The time, the 1890s, the place Vienna. Late in the evening on the Augerton Bridge, a soldier is on his way home whistling. From the shadows, he hears a voice. Wanna come with me, Angel Face? You mean me, Angel Face? Who do you think? Come on, come with me. I live near here. No time. Uh, have to get back to the barracks. Oh, you'll get back to the barracks all right. But it's nicer with me. Yeah, could be. Ah, uh, huh? Cop might come. Nonsense. What's a cop? Got my sword on. Come with me. Uh, leave me alone. I got no money anyhow. I don't need any money. The soldier stops walking under a street lamp and sees the whore, who has been following him clearly for the first time. You don't need any money? Who are you, for God's sake? Civilians have to pay, sure. A guy like you can get it, for, can get it from me for nothing. So you're the one Huber told me about. I don't know any Huber. Yes, you're the one. That's right, the, uh, the cafe in the Schiff Gus. And then he went home with you. The cafe in the Schiff Gus. I've taken plenty of guys home from there. Oh, let's go there. Let's go. What, you're in a hurry now? Well, what are you waiting for? I gotta be back in the barracks at 10. How long you been in the army? What business is that of yours? Live far from here? 10 minutes walk. No, too far. How about a little kiss? The whore stops, takes his face in his hands and kisses him hard. I like that part the best. When I like a guy. She goes to kiss him again, but the soldier pushes her away. I don't. No, I, I can't go with you. It's too far. Tell you what. 
come tomorrow in the afternoon. Okay, give me the address. Only, I bet you won't come. I told you I would, didn't I? Tell you what, uh, if it's too far tonight, how about over there? It's over there. Lovely and quiet there too. No around this way. Oh, with... that's no good. It's always good with me. Come on, stay with me. Who knows if we'll still be around tomorrow? Okay then, well, let's make it snappy. Easy. It's so dark there, one slip and you're in the Danube. It might be the best thing. Psst. Hey, hey, wait a second. We're just going to a bench. You know your way around. Wish I had a guy like you for a boyfriend. Oh, I'd make you jealous too much. I'd know how to take care of that. Think so? Not so loud. Could be a cop around. He might be lost. Who do think we were in the middle of Vienna? Over here. Come on. Over here. It's got into you. If we slip, we're in the river. The soldier now grabs the whore by the shoulders and pushes her up against the lamppost. Hands and lips are all over. Ah, uh, now. Hold on tight now. Don't worry. The aftermath. The whore and the soldier are readjusting their clothes. The moon is shining on the Danube. It'd been a lot better on the bench. On the bench, off the bench. Well, you getting up? Where are you rushing off to? Gotta get back to the barracks. I'm late anyhow. Tell me, soldier. What's your name? What's my name got to do with you? Mine's Leocadia. Ha! That's a new one. Soldier. Well, what do you want? How about a dime for the janitor? <laughs> What do you think I am? By now, Leocadia. <laughs> she realizes that the soldier has stolen her jeweled brooch and runs after him in a fury. Oh, oh my God, you crook, you son of a bitch! But he is gone. The Prodder, Sunday evening, a path leading from the Warts to Prodder or amusement park out into dark avenues of trees. The din of the amusement park is audible. So is the sounds of the Frunz Cloistertons, banal polka played by a brass band. The soldier and the parlor maid enter, dancing and drinking. Yes, but now you must tell me, why were you in such a hurry to leave? <laughs> I thought it was marvellous. I love dancing. But we're not dancing now. Why are you holding me so tight? What's your name, Kathy? You've got a Kathy on your mind. I know. I've got it. Marie. Look, it's dark here. I get so scared. There's nothing to be afraid of with me around. But where are we going to, though? There's no one around at all. Let's go back. Come on. How dark it is. She pulls at his hand, but the soldier stays put, pulling at his Virginia cigar till the tip glows. See the lighter? Ah, my little treasure. Oh, what are you doing? Nice and soft. Damned if you're not the nicest and softest one in the whole bunch, Fraulein. What whole bunch? In there, in the Svoboda. You tried all of them? Oh, you notice. Dancing. You notice a lot of things. <laughs> you danced with that blonde more than with me. The one with the crooked face. An old friend of a buddy of mine. You mean of that corporal with the turned up moustache? Uh, nah, the civilian. You know, the one at the table with me before, with the uh, horse voice? Oh, yes, I know. He's pretty fresh. Did he try something with you? I'll show the bastard. What did he try? Oh, nothing. I just saw how he was with the other girls. 
Now, Fraulein, tell me. Oh, you'll burn me with that cigar. Oh, so sorry, Fraulein. Oh, can I call you Marie? We haven't known each other very long. Oh, there's lots of people who can't stand each other and still use first names. You see, Herr Franz. You remembered my name. You see, Herr Franz. I'll make it just Franz, Fraulein. Well, then don't be so fresh. Shh. What if somebody comes? What if they do? You can't see two feet in front of you. But heavens, where are we going? Look, there's two just like us. Where? I can't see a thing. There, right up there. What do you say like us for? Uh, I only mean they kind of like each other. Hey, watch out. What was that? I nearly fell. It's these railings they put around the grass. Don't push so hard. I'll fall right over. Look, now I'm really going to scream. What are you doing? There's no one for miles around. Let's go back with the rest of them. But we don't need them, Marie. What we need is... He leans in and kisses her. As she kisses back, he starts to undress her. Herr Franz, please, for heaven's sake. Now listen, if I'd had any idea, oh, oh, yes. Oh, Jesus Christ almighty, ah. I can't see your face at all. My face? Hell. He flips her over. The aftermath, she lays on the grass sleepily. The soldier has been impatiently getting dressed. Now look, Fraulein, you can't stay in the grass all night. Oh, come on, Franz. Help me up. Okay. Oops. Oh dear, Franz. Yes, yes. What's the matter with Franz? You're a bad man, Franz. Oh, so that's it. What do you let me go for? Can I get, can I get this cigar lit, for God's sake? It's so dark. No, well, tomorrow it'll be light again. They resume their walk. The soldier is walking faster than the parlor maid. At least tell me, do you like me? I thought you might have noticed. <laughs> Where are we going? Why, back. Oh, please, Franz, not so quick. What's the matter? I don't like running around in the dark. Tell me, Franz, do you like me? I just told you, I liked you. Come on then, give me a little kiss. Here. Listen, you can hear that music again. You probably want to go dancing again. Sure, what else? Well, Franz, look, I must be getting back. They'll gripe anyhow. The lady of the house is such a... She'd like it best if we never went out at all. Sure, you go home then. Herr Franz, I thought you might take me. Home? Uh. Oh, please. It's so dreary going home alone. Where do you live? It's not far. Port Selengaza. Oh, well, let me uh, go the same way. It's too early for me. I want some fun. I got a late pass tonight. Don't have to be back in the barracks till 12. I'm going dancing. I see how it is. Is that blonde? The one with the crooked face? <laughs> Her face ain't so bad. Heavens, you men are wicked. I bet you do this to every girl. That would be too much. Franz, do me a favour. Not tonight. Stay just with me tonight. Look. Okay, okay. But I can dance for a while first, I suppose? Tonight, I'm not dancing with anyone else. Oh, here it is. What? The Svoboda. How quickly we got back, huh? Oh, and they're still playing that thing. All right. If you want to wait, I'll take you home. If you don't, then I'll be saying a good night. 
I think I'll wait. And why don't you get yourself a glass of beer? <laughs> May I have the pleasure? A hot summer afternoon. His parents are off in the country. The cook is having her half day. In the kitchen, the parlor maid is writing the soldier a letter. There is a ring from the young gentleman's room. She gets up and goes into the young gentleman's room. The young gentleman is lying on the sofa with cigarette and French novel. You rang, Herr Alfred. Oh, yes, Marie. Yes, I did ring as a matter of fact. What was it? Oh, I know. Let the blinds down, Marie, will you? It's cooler with the blinds down, don't you think? The parlor maid goes to the window and lets the Venetian blinds down. What are you doing, Marie? Oh, that's right. Oh, but now I can't see to read. The way you always study so, Herr Alfred. <laughs> That'll be all, thanks. The parlor maid goes out. The young gentleman tries to go on reading. Soon he lets the book fall, rings again. The parlor maid is in the doorway. Uh, look, Marie, now I, what I was going to say, well, yes, is there any co cognac in the house? Yes, Herr Alfred, but it's locked up. Oh, well, who has the key? Linny has the key. Who's Linny? The cook, Herr Alfred. Oh, then go and tell Linny. Well, Linny's having her half day. Oh. Shall I run over to the cafe for you, Herr Alfred? Uh, oh no, hard enough as it is. Uh, don't I don't don't need any cognac anyway. Listen, Marie, just uh, bring me a glass of water. Uh, but wait, Marie, uh, let let it run until um, it's quite cold. The parlor maid goes, and the young gentleman stares into space. The parlor maid returns. The the parlor maid turns on the faucet and lets the water run. Meanwhile, she goes to her little room washes her hands and arranges her curls in the mirror. Then she brings the young gentleman the glass of water. She walks to the sofa, their fingers touch. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, what is it? Now be careful, put the glass back on the tray. What's the time? Five o'clock, Herr Alfred. Ah, I see, five. Thank you. The parlor maid goes at the door. She turns. The young gentleman is looking. She notices and smiles. He tries to read again. In a couple of minutes, he again rings. The parlor maid enters with a smile which she makes no attempt to hide. Uh, look, Marie, what I was going to ask you, um, didn't Dr. Schuler call this morning? No, no one called this morning. Well. That's strange. So Dr. Schuler didn't call? You know him, Dr. Schuler? Oh yes, the tall gentleman with the black beard. Yes, then maybe he did call? No, no one called Herr Alfred. Come here, Marie. Yes, Herr Alfred? Closer. Yes, um, I, only thought. Uh, yes, Herr Alfred. Uh, thought uh, I thought about that blouse. What kind is it? Uh, oh, oh, come closer. I won't bite you. What's this about my blouse? You don't like it, Herr Alfred. He takes hold of the blouse and in doing so pulls the parlor maid down on him. Blue, is it? Yes, well, lovely blue. You're very nicely dressed, Marie. But Herr Alfred. Well, what? You've got lovely white skin, Marie. 
I think you're flattering me, Herr Alfred. This can't hurt you, can it? Oh, no. How you're sighing. Why do you sigh like that? Oh, Herr Alfred. What nice slippers you have on. But, Herr Alfred, if the doorbell rings. Who would ring at this hour? But, Herr Alfred, you see, it's so light. <laughs> you needn't be embarrassed with me. You needn't be embarrassed with anybody. Pretty as you are. I swear you are, Marie. You know, your hair is such a pleasant smell. Herr Alfred? Don't make such a fuss, Marie. I've seen you quite different. When I came in late the other night and went for a glass of water, the door to your room was open. Yes? Oh, heavens, I'd no idea you could be so naughty, Herr Alfred. I saw a uh, great, great deal. This, and this, and this, and... Herr Alfred! Come on. Here. That's right. Yes. But if anyone rings... We won't go to the door. The aftermath. The doorbell rings. Christ almighty. What a racket the man makes. Maybe he rang before and we just didn't notice anything. Oh, I kept my ears open the whole time. Well, now I'll go and see through the people. Herr Alfred, you are, no, a naughty man. Now please go take a look. Whoever it was, he's gone away again. There's no one there. Maybe it was Dr. Schuler. That'll be all, thanks. Look, Marie, I'm going to the cafe. So soon, Herr Alfred. I'm going to the cafe. If Dr. Schuler should come here. He won't be here today. If Dr. Schuler should come here, I'm in the cafe. He goes into the next room. The parlor maid takes a cigar from the smoking table, slips it in her pocket, and goes out. The young gentleman has just come in, still in a hat and overcoat and lights the candles. The glow of the candles in the drawing room falls on the parquet floor and makes its way to the four poster against the rear wall. A reddish glow from the fireplace in a corner of the bedroom is thrown on the bed curtains. The young gentleman also inspects the bedroom. He takes an atomizer from the dressing table and sprays it on the pillows with a fine stream of violet perfume. Then he goes with the spray to both rooms, squeezing the little bulb the whole time so that soon the whole place smells of violets. He takes off his hat and overcoat, sits down on a blue velvet armchair, lights a cigarette and smokes. After a short while, he gets up to make sure that the green shutters are drawn. Suddenly he goes back to the bedroom, opens the drawer of the bedside table, feels around till he finds a tortoise shell hairpin. He looks around for a place to hide it and finally puts it in his overcoat pocket. Then he opens a cupboard in the drawing room, takes out a silver tray and cognac bottle and two liquor glasses and puts them on the table. He goes back to his overcoat and fishes out a small white parcel which he opens and puts next to the cognac bottle. He returns to the cupboard and takes out two dessert plates, knives, and forks. From the small parcel, he extracts a marin glace and eats it. Then he pours himself a glass of cognac and dr quickly drinks it down. He looks at his watch. He paces the room. In front of the large mirror on the wall, he stops for a while, smoothing his hair and little mustache with a pocket comb. He goes to the door to the hall and listens. Not a sound. The doorbell rings and the young wife enters. The young wife, thickly veiled, shuts the door behind her and stands for a moment with her left hand on her heart as though she had to master intense emotion. The young gentleman takes her hand and kisses it. Why, well, thank you. Alfred. Alfred. Men, dear lady. 
Come in, Frau Emma. Let me alone for a moment, please. Oh, please, Alfred. But where am I, actually? In my flat. This building is a horror, Alfred. Why? It's very dignified. I met two men in the stairs. People you know? I don't know. Maybe. Forgive me. You must know who you know. But I didn't see a thing. Even if they'd been your best friends, they couldn't have recognized you. Even I, if I didn't know it was you, you know, the, this veil. There are two. Won't you, won't you come a bit closer in? Anyway, take off your hat. What are you thinking of, Alfred? Hmm? I told you five minutes. No, not a second more. I swear. Then the veil. There are two. Oh, well, both veils then. At least I'm allowed to see you. Do you really love me, Alfred? Emma, can you ask? Oh, it's so hot in here. But you still have your fur cape on. You're going to catch cold. I'm dead tired. Permit me? He takes her veil off, takes out the hat pin, puts hat pin and veils down side by side on the sofa. What's the matter with you? Never were you so beautiful. How's that? Alone. Alone with you, Emma. And now, let me go. I've done what you asked. You promised promised. me that you'd be good. Yes. This room stifling. You still have your cape on. Put it with my hat. And now adieu. Hmm? Emma. The five minutes are up. No, no. You haven't been here one minute yet. Alfred, please tell me exactly what time it is. Quarter past six on the nose. I should have been at my sister's long ago. You can see your sister anytime. Oh God, Alfred. Why did you get me to do this? Because I worship you, Emma. How many women have you said that to? Well, since I saw you, to none. (laughs) What a frivolous woman I am. If anyone had told me a week ago, or even yesterday. It was the day before yesterday you promised. Because you kept tormenting me, but I didn't want to. God is my witness. I did not want to. Yesterday, I'd made up my mind. Do you know, I even wrote you a long letter last night. I didn't get it. I tore it up. I should have sent it. It's better like this. No, it's scandalous. Of moi, of me. I can't... I cannot understand myself. Goodbye, Alfred. Let me go. The young gentleman takes her in his arms and covers her face with hot kisses. Oh, so this is how you keep your promise? One more kiss. Just one. The last. He kisses her. She reciprocates. And their lips stay together a long time. May I tell you something, Emma? It is only now that I know what happiness is. Or rather, only now do I know what happiness might be. Alfred. Alfred, what are you making me into? It's not really so uncomfortable here, is it? And we are so safe. It's a thousand times better than meeting in the open air. Oh, do not remind me. Even those meetings I shall think of with delight. Every minute I've had the privilege of spending at your side will linger forever as a sweet memory. You remember the industrial boy? Do I remember? But I didn't, but didn't I sit next to you during supper right up close? The champagne, your husband. I was only going to mention the champagne. Tell me, Emma, wouldn't you like a glass of cognac? Maybe just a drop. But first, let me have a glass of water. Yes. Now, where is 
Oh, yes. The young gentleman returns, gets the filled decanter and two glasses. Where were you? In the next room. Now, I'm going to ask you something, Alfred, and you must swear to tell the truth. I swear. Was there ever another woman in these rooms? But Emma, this house has been around for 20 years. Ah, you know what I mean, Alfred. With you. With me? Mm. Here? Mm. Emma, it's not nice for you to think about such things. Oh, then you have. How shall I? But no, it's better not to ask you. It's better if I don't ask. It's my own fault. Everything takes its revenge. What, what is it? What's the matter with you? What takes revenge? No, 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 no. I mustn't return to consciousness. I'd sink into the ground for very shame. Emma, if only you had any idea how you hurt me. I'll tell you something, Emma. If you're ashamed to be here, that's to say if I'm nothing to you, if you don't feel that you mean all the bliss in the world to me, then leave. That is just what I'll do. But if you realize that I can't live without you, that to kiss your hand means more to me than all the caresses of all the women in the whole world. Emma, I'm not like the other young men who know how this sort of thing is done. Call me naive if you wish. I... But what if you were like the other young men? Hmm? Then you wouldn't be here now. You aren't like the other young women. How do you know? I thought a lot about you. I know you're unhappy. Life is so empty, so trivial, and so short. Isn't life frightfully short, Emma? There's only one happiness, to find someone who loves you. The young wife has taken a candied pear from the table and puts it into her mouth. Oh, give me half. She offers it to him with her lips. The young wife takes the young gentleman's hands, which threaten to go astray. What are you doing, Alfred? Is this your promise? Hmm? Life is so short. But that's no reason. Oh, but it is. Now look, Alfred. You promise to be good, and it's so light. Oh, come, come. My only one, my only. He lifts her off the sofa. What are you doing? <laughs> it's not light in there. Is there another room? A lovely one. And quite dark. I'd rather stay here. The young gentleman has already got her through the curtains and in the bedroom. He begins to unhook her dress at the waist. You're so... Oh, God! What are you doing to me, Alfred? Emma, I worship you. Wait, please. At least wait. Go, I'll call you. Let me, let me, let you help me, let me But help you're carrying you. everything. Don't you wear a corset? I never wear a corset. Neither does Zeus, incidentally. Uh, you can but unbutton my boots. Hmm? The young gentleman unbuttons her boots, kisses her feet. She slips into the bed. Oh, I'm cold. It'll get warm. <laughs> You think so? Oh, she shouldn't have said that. He undresses in the dark. Come. 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 At once. <laughs> it smells of violets here. It's you. Yes. You. Alfred. Alfred. Emma. The aftermath. They have both faked it and are now lying uncomfortably next to each other. I must be too much in love with you, that's why. I'm nearly out of my senses. And all these past days I've been going crazy. I, you know, I felt it coming. 
Don't worry your head about it. Hmm? Of course not. You can almost take it for granted when a man. Don't. Don't. You're nervous. Just relax. You know Stendhal? Stendhal? His book, De l'Amour. No, what do you ask? There's a story in it that's most significant. What sort of story? A bunch of officers have gotten together. Oh. And they talk about their love affairs. Everyone says that with the woman he loved most, most passionately, you know? She made him, with her, he, well, in fact, is it happened to every one of them, what happened to me with you. I see. You know, this is very typical. Yes. But that's not all. One of them claims it has never happened to him in all his life. Mm. But Stendhal adds, this man was a notorious show-off. Oh. All the same, it kind of throws you. That's the stupid thing about it, even if it doesn't really matter. Naturally. Anyway, you promise to be good. Hmm? Please don't laugh. I won't improve things. I'm not laughing. This standard story is very interesting. I'd always thought it happened only with older men or with very, uh, well, you know, men who've been too fast. One idea. That is, that, that, that is nothing to do with it. By the way, I forgot the most charming story of, in the Stendhal. A lieutenant in Hussars even says that he spent three nights, or mm. was it six? I, I can't remember. With the woman he'd been wanting for weeks, desire and all that. And all those nights, they didn't do a thing but cry with happiness. Both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Does that surprise you? Mm. I find it so understandable, especially when you're in love. But uh, there must be a lot who don't cry. Surely, uh, I mean, after all, it was an exceptional case. Oh, I, I thought Stendhal says all has few stars cry on these occasions. Yeah, you're just making fun. Not in the least. Don't be so childish, Alfred. Hmm? I can't help it. It makes me nervous. And, and I have the feeling you're thinking of it the whole time. Like, I'm embarrassed. I'm not thinking about it. You are. If I can only be sure you love me. Do you want better proof than... Uh... Oh, yeah. You see, you're always making fun of me. Not at all! Come, come. Give me your sweet little head. Oh, this is good. Do you love me? I'm so happy. But no need to cry too. Hmm? Again, again, didn't I beg you? I said you shouldn't cry, that was all. You said no need to cry. You're nervous, my dear. Hmm? I know that. You shouldn't be. It's rather nice that, uh, that we uh, that we are comrades, as you might say. Now you're starting over. Don't you remember? It was one of your very first talks. We wanted to be just comrades. <laughs> oh, it was lovely that time at my sister's in January at the great ball during the quadrille. For heaven's sake, I should have left long ago. My sister will be waiting. What shall I tell her? Adieu, Alfred. Hmm? Emma, you're going to leave me like this? Yes. Like this. <laughs> Just another five minutes. All right. Five minutes, five minutes. But you must promise me to keep quiet still, yes? I'm going to give you a goodbye kiss. Keep still, as I told you, or I'll get right up. My sweet, sweet Emma. I worship. Aftermath. The second time, it was still fake. <sighs> Darling Alfred. Oh, it's heaven with you. But now I must really go. Hmm? Oh, let your sister wait. <sighs> I must go home. It's too late for my sister. What time is it now? Hmm? How would I find that out? Well, 
by looking at your watch. But it's in my waistcoat. Well, get it. Eight. For heaven's sake. Quick, Alfred, my stockings. Oh, whatever shall I say? They'll be waiting for me at home. Eight o'clock. When do I see you next? <laughs> oh. Never. Emma, don't you still love me? That's why. Give me my boots. Never again. Any? Oh, yeah, yeah, here, here are the boots. Uh, there's a button hook in my pocketbook. Please hurry. Here's the button hook. Alfred, this can cost us both our necks. Why? Well, what can I tell him when he asks me where I've been? At your sister's. Yes, if only I were a good liar. You all just have to be. All this for a man like you. Come here. Let me give you another kiss. And now, leave me alone. Go in the other room. I can't dress with you around. Mwah. The young gentleman goes to the drawing room and gets dressed. He eats a little of the pastry, drinks a glass of cognac. Alfred? Yes, my treasure? Maybe it's good we didn't just cry. How can you treat it so lightly? What would it be like if we meet at a party one day by chance? One day? Hmm. By chance? Mm -hmm. Surely you'll be at Lopheimer's tomorrow. Yes, will you? Of course. May I ask for the cotillion? Oh, I want to go. How can you think? Uh, why? <sighs> she enters the drawing room fully dressed and takes the chocolate pastry. I'd sink into the ground. Well, tomorrow at the Lopheimer's. That's lovely. No, 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 no. I'll send word. I cannot come. Definitely. Then the day after tomorrow. Here. What an idea. <laughs> at six. There are cabs at the corner, aren't there? As many as you like. Then it's day after tomorrow, six o'clock here. Say yes, my dearest treasure. We'll talk it over tomorrow, during the cotillion. Hmm? Angel. Don't spoil my hairdo again. So it's tomorrow at the Lobheimers and the day after in my arms. Au revoir. Goodbye. And what are you going to tell him tonight? Don't ask. Don't ask. It's too dreadful. <sighs> Why do I love you so? Goodbye. Au revoir. If I meet people on the stairs again, I shall have a stroke. The young gentleman kisses her hand yet again. The young wife goes, leaving him alone. Well, now I'm having an affair with a respectable woman. Scene five, the young wife and the husband, a comfortable bedroom. It is 1030 at night. The young wife is lying in bed reading. The husband comes into the room in his bathrobe. You stopped working? Yes, I'm too tired. And besides... Yes? I suddenly felt so lonely at my desk. I began longing for you. Really? Oh, don't read any more tonight. You'll ruin your eyes. What's the matter? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with you. But you know that. One might almost forget it sometimes. One even has to forget it sometimes. Why? Oh, marriage would be imperfect otherwise. It would. Um, how shall I put it? Um, it would lose its sanctity. Oh. <laughs> Believe me, it's true. In the course of the five years we've been married, uh, we had 
sometimes forgotten we're in love with one another. We probably wouldn't be in love anymore. That's over my head. Well, the fact is simply this. Uh, we've had something like 10 or 12 different love affairs with one another. Isn't that how it seems to you? I haven't kept count. If we pushed our first affair to the limit, uh, if I blindly surrendered myself to my passion for you from the beginning, we'd have gone the way of millions of others. We'd be through by now. I see what you mean. Believe me, Emma. In the first days of our marriage, I was afraid it would turn out that way. So was I. You see? Wasn't I right? That's why it's best, from time to time, to live together just as friends. Oh, I see. That way we can always keep having new honeymoons, because I never risk letting the weeks of the honeymoon... Run into months. Exactly. And now it seems another of those... Periods of friendship has come to an end? It could be so. But suppose it was different with me. It isn't different with you. You're the cleverest creature alive. And the most bewitching. I'm very happy to have found you. How nice that you do know how to court a woman from time to time. The husband has gotten into bed. For a man who's seen the world a bit, come, put your head on my shoulder. Seen the world a bit? Marriage means something far more mysterious than to girls from good families like you. Uh, you come to us pure and, uh, at least to a certain degree, uh, ignorant. And so you have, in reality, a much clearer view of the true nature of love than we do. Oh! Certainly, because uh, we're <laughs> insecure. Uh, confused by the many varied experiences we have before marriage, unavoidably. You women hear a lot know too much. I'm afraid you read too much, too. But you can never have an accurate concept of what we men have to go through. What commonly is called love is made utterly repellent to us, mm. because, after all, what are the poor creatures we have to resort to? Yes, what are the poor creatures you have to resort to? Mm? I'll be glad, my dear, that you never had a glimpse of these circles. Mm. Most of them are rather pitiable beings, incidentally. Oh, <laughs> let us not cast the first stone. You pity them? That doesn't seem quite right. Oh, I deserve it. You girls from good families who can quietly wait beneath the parental roof till a decent man proposes to you. You don't know the misery that drives those poor creatures into the arms of sin. Oh, they all sell themselves then? Hmm? Well, I wouldn't quite say that. And I'm not thinking merely of material misery. There is also a one might say, a moral misery, an insufficient grasp of what is proper, and especially what is noble. But why should we pity them? Don't they have rather a nice time of it? You have peculiar opinions, my dear. Now forget that these creatures are destined by nature to sink forever lower and lower and lower. There is no stopping it. Sinking sounds rather nice. How can you say such a thing, Emma? 
I should have thought there could be nothing more repellent to a decent woman than the thought of. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Carl, of course. I said it to that thinking. Uh, let, tell me more. Tell me more. It's so nice when you talk like this. Tell me more. What about? About those creatures. But what an idea. Look. I asked you before, didn't I? Right at the beginning, I kept asking you to tell me about your youth. Why does that interest you? Aren't you my husband? And isn't it positively unfair that I know absolutely nothing about your past? I hope you don't think that I'd in such bad taste. No, Emma. It would be profanation. And yet you've held any number of other young ladies in your arms the way you're holding me now. Young ladies, you're a lady. There's one question you must answer. Or, or, else, or else no honeymoon, huh? You've a way of talking. Remember, my darling, you're a mother. Our little girl is sleeping in there. <laughs> but I want a boy, too. Emma. Oh, don't be so. Of course, I'm your wife. But I'd like to be your mistress. Sort of. <laughs> what? First, my question. What is it? Was there a... A married woman among them. What? How do you mean? You know. Well, what makes you ask? I'd like to know if there... <clears throat> I mean, there are women like that, I know. But have you... Do you know any such woman? Well, I can't tell. <sighs> Is there such a woman among your friends? Well, how could I say yes or no and be sure? <laughs> As one of your women friends? People talk a lot when they... Women among themselves? Has one of them confessed? No! Do you suspect that one of your friends... Suspect? Well, suspect. <laughs> it seems you do. Definitely not, Carl. Most certainly not. Uh, now I think it over. I would not believe not one of them. No. Not one? Of friends? Of my friends? Not one. Mm -mm. Promise me something, Emma. Well? Promise me you'll never go around with a woman if you have the slightest suspicion that her life is not beyond reproach. You need a promise for that? I know, uh, of course, uh, that you would never seek contact with such a woman. Mm -hmm. But by chance you might. It frequently happens that women... Um, who don't enjoy the best reputation, seek the company of respectable women, partly for contrast and partly out of a certain, how well, shall I say, um, uh, out of a certain nostalgia for virtue. I see. Yes, I, I believe it's very true what I just said. Uh, nostalgia for virtue. <laughs> There's one thing you can be sure of. In reality, all these women are very unhappy. Why? How can you ask, Emma? Only imagine what sort of existence they have to lead. Full of meanness, lies, treachery, and full of danger. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure you're right. Indeed. And they pay for that bit of happiness. That bit of... Pleasure. Pleasure? 
What makes you call it pleasure? Well, it's something uh, or they wouldn't do it. Hmm? It's nothing. Mere intoxication. Mere intoxication. Not even intoxication. But one thing is certain. It's bought at a price. Then you do know what you're talking about, hmm? Yes, Emma. It's my saddest memory. Who was it? Tell me. Do I know her? Emma! What are you thinking of? Uh, was it long ago, very long before you married me? Don't ask. Please, don't ask. But Carla! <laughs> she is dead. Honestly? Yes. It may sound ridiculous, but I have the feeling that all these women die young. Did you love her very much? Oh, can a man love a liar? Then why... Intoxication. Then you did... Please, don't talk about it. All that is long past. I've only loved one woman. You. A man can only love where he finds purity and, and truth. Carl. Oh, how safe, how good a man feels in these arms. Why didn't I know you as a child? I'm sure I'd never have looked at another woman. Carl. You're beautiful, beautiful. Oh. The aftermath. Once again, the young wife hasn't finished, but the husband is satisfied. You know what? I. You know what? I cannot help thinking of tonight. What, my treasure? Of. Uh, of Venice. The first nine. Yes. Like that. What is it? Tell me. Tonight. That's how you love me tonight. Yes, that's how I love you. If you could always... Yes? Oh, Carla, dear. What was it you wanted to say? If I could always... Well, yes. Well... What would happen if I could always? Then, I'd always know you love me. Yes. But you know how. No, it's anyhow. Man can't always be the loving husband. A man must go out into his hostile life, take with him high goals, and learn the meaning of strife. Always remember this, my dear. In marriage, there's a time for everything. That's the beauty of it. There aren't many who still remember their Venice after five years. No. Of course not. And now, good night, my dear. Good night. Good night. The husband and the little miss. A private room in the Reedhoff restaurant. Comfortable, unobtrusive elegance. On the table, the remains of a meal. Meringues with much whipped cream, fruit, cheese, 
White Hungarian wine is in the glasses. The husband smokes a Havana cigar, leans back on the corner of the sofa. The little miss sits on a chair beside him, scoops the whipped cream out of a meringue, and sucks it up with satisfaction. It's good. Mmm. Like another? Oh, no, I've eaten too much already. Oh, you've no wine left. No, I'll only leave it, sir. Now you're still calling me sir. Well, it's hard to get out of the habit, sir. Sir. You said, you said sir again. Come and sit by me. One moment, I'm not through. The husband gets up, stands behind her chair, and puts his arms around her, turning her head toward him. What is it now? I'd like to have a kiss. <laughs> You're pretty fresh, you are. You only just noticed it? Oh, I noticed before, in the street. You must have quite an opinion of me. How's that? Going straight to a private room with you? Hey, you didn't go straight to the private room. But you've such a nice way of asking. You think so? After all, what's wrong about it? <laughs> Precisely. Whether you go for a walk, or you... Oh, it's much too cold for a walk, isn't it? Of course it was much too cold. <laughs> and here it's nice and warm, don't you think? He has sat down again and puts his arm around the little miss, pulling her over to his side. Hey. <laughs> Now tell me, you noticed me before, hadn't you? Sure, in the Singer Strauss. Well, I don't mean today, the day before yesterday, and the day before that. I, I was following you. There's plenty follow me. <laughs> I can imagine. But did you notice me? Well, um... You know what happened to me the other day? My cousin's husband followed me into the dark and didn't recognize me. Did he speak to you? I mean, the idea. You think everybody's as fresh as you? It happens. Sure, it happens. Well, what do you do then? Me? Nothing. I just don't answer. Hmm. You answered me. Well, are you mad at me? Your lips taste of whipped cream. Oh, they're sweet by nature. Many men have told you that, have they? Many men. The ideas you get. Oh, be honest with me. How many have kissed these lips? Why ask? If I tell you, you won't believe me. Why not? Guess. Let's say, um, I mustn't be angry. Why should I be? Well, I'd guess. Twenty. Why not a hundred while you're at it? That was only a guess. It was a bad guess. Well, let's say ten. Oh, sure. A girl who lets you talk her to her in the streets and, and goes straight to a private dining room. Don't be a child. 
Other people run around in the streets or sit together in a room. Here, we're in a restaurant. The waiter can come in any time. There's nothing to it. That's just what I thought. Have you ever been in a private dining room before? Well, if I must tell you the truth, yes. Well, I like that. You're honest. It wasn't like you think. I was with my girlfriend and her fiancé during the last carnival. Well, it wouldn't be a tragedy if you'd been with your boyfriend. Sure, it wouldn't be a tragedy. But I haven't got a boyfriend. Go on. Cross my heart, I haven't. You don't mean to tell me, I... What? There hasn't been anyone for more than six months. I see. And before that? Who was it? Why are you so inquisitive for? Because I'm in love with you. Really? Of course. Hadn't you noticed? Come on, tell me. I'll tell you what. Oh, don't keep me begging. I'd like to know who he was. Oh, a man, of course. Oh, come on, come on. Who was he? He was a bit like you. Indeed. If you hadn't been so much like him. Well, what then? Now, don't ask. You know what. So that's why you let me speak to you? Well, yes. <clears throat> well, I don't know whether to be glad or annoyed. If I was you, I'd be glad. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, the way you, you talk reminds me of him, too. And the way you look at a girl. And... What was he? It's really, really your eyes. What was his name? Uh, don't look at me like that. N no, ple please. <laughs> the husband takes her in his arms. A long, hot kiss. The mm. little miss shakes herself free and tries to get up. What's the matter? Time to go home. Later. No, I, I must go home. Really. What do you think Mother would say? You're living with your mother? Sure I am. What did you think? Oh, I see. With your mother. Just the two of you. Just the two? There, there's five of us. Two boys and three girls. I don't sit so far away. Are you the eldest? No, um, I'm the second. First, there's Kathy. She goes to work in a flower shop. <laughs> then there's me. What do you do? I'm at home. All the time? Well, one of us has got to be home. Naturally. Well, and what do you tell your mother when you come home late? It doesn't happen often. Tonight, for example, your mother doesn't ask you? Oh, sure she does. <laughs> it doesn't matter how careful I am when I get home. She wakes up every time. What will you tell her tonight? Oh, well, I guess I'll have been to the theater. Will she believe you? Why shouldn't she? I often go to the theater. Only last Sunday I was to the opera with my girlfriend and her fiancé. And my older brother. Where do you get the tickets from? My brother's a barber. Of course, barbers. 
I suppose he's a theatrical barber. Why are you pumping me like this? I'm interested. And what's your other brother? Uh, he's, he's still at school. He wants to be a teacher. Imagine. <laughs> and you've a younger sister, too? Yes. She's only a squirt. <laughs> but, but at that, you've got to keep an eye on her. <laughs> you have no idea what these girls learn at school. Do, do you know, the other day, I caught her having a date. What? I did, with a boy from her school opposite. She was walking out with him in the strozzi gas at half past seven, the brat. What did you do? Oh, well, she got a spanking. Well, you are as, as strict as all that. There's no one else to do it. My older sister's in the shop. Mother does nothing but grumble, and so... Everything falls on me. God, you're sweet. And you remind me of someone, too. Do I? Who is she? Uh, no one in particular. You remind me of the time when... Well, my youth... Hey, come, drink up, child. How old are you? Um, I don't even know your name. Carl. Honest? Your name's Carl? His was Carl, too? I mean, really, it's a miracle. It's... <laughs> it's... It's too... <laughs> No, th those eyes. Th that, that look. You still haven't told me who he was. A bad man. That's what he was. Or he wouldn't have dropped me. Did you like him a lot? Sure, I liked him a lot. I know what he was. Lieutenant. No, he wasn't in the army. They wouldn't take him. His father got a house in the... Uh, but what do you want to know for? Your eyes are gray, really. At first I thought they were black. Well, aren't they nice enough for you? Oh, no. No, that that's something I can't stand. Please. Uh, please. God. Uh no, no, let me let me get up. Yeah, uh, just just for a minute. Oh, please. No. 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 But Carl, please. How old are you? 18, is it? Nineteen now. Nineteen. And you're, I am... Uh, you're thirty. And uh, a little more. Uh, don't let's talk about it. At that... He was thirty-two when I met him. <laughs> How long ago? I can't remember it. You know what? There was something in that, that wine. How so? I'm quite, you know, everything's turning around. Hold on to me. Like this. He pulls her to him and becomes more and more tender. I'll tell you something, treasure. Now we might really go. Yes, home. Well, not home, exactly. What do you mean? Oh, no. I, I wouldn't. What an idea. Now, listen to me, child. Next time we meet, uh, you know, we'll arrange it, so... He has slipped to the floor, 
his head in her lap. He moves her skirts. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. What are you doing? There must be something in the wine. Oh, so sleepy. Hey, what, what happens if I can't get up? But, but look, look, Carl. If, if someone comes in, please, please, the waiter. No waiter will come in here. Not in your lifetime. Afterwards, the little miss leans back in a corner of the sofa, her eyes shut. The husband walks up and down the small room after lighting a cigar. A longish silence. The husband looks at the girl for a long time, then says to himself, Who knows what sort of person she really is, uh, God in heaven. So quickly, uh, wasn't very careful of me. Hmm. There must have been something in that wine. How's that? Uh, otherwise. Well, why blame everything on the wine? Where are you? Why are you so far away? Come here to me. The husband goes to her, sits down. Now. Tell me if you really like me. But you know, um, of course I do. See, there is, come on, tell me the truth. What was in that wine? <laughs> you think I go around poisoning people? I just don't understand. I'm not like that. We've only known known each other for... Listen, I'm not like that. Cross my heart. Cross my heart if you believe that of me. There, there. Don't fret so. I don't think anything bad of you. I just think you like me. Yes. After all, if two young people are alone together and have supper or drink wine, it doesn't have to be anything in the wine. Oh, uh, I was just gabbing. But why? Because I was ashamed. That's ridiculous. There's no reason for it, especially since I remind you of your first love. Yes. You're first. Oh, sh sure. Now, it wouldn't interest me to know who the others were. There weren't any, truly. That isn't true. Can't be true. Please don't nag me. Cigarette? No, thank you. Do you know what time it is? What? Half past eleven. Really? Well, what about your mother? Used to it, is she? You want to send me home already? But you wanted yourself. Look, you're different now. What have I done to you? Oh, my dear child, what's wrong? What are you thinking of? It, it was... Look in your eyes. I want to cross my heart. I, 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 otherwise, you could have waited a long, 
you know, a lot of men have asked me to go to a private room with them. Well, would you like to? To come here again soon? Or some other place? I don't know. And what's that mean, you don't know? Why do you have to ask? All right. When? First, I must explain that I don't live in Vienna. I uh, just come here now and then for a couple of days. Go on. You aren't Viennese? Well, yes, I'm Viennese, but I live uh, out of town. Where? Goodness. That doesn't matter, does it? Don't worry. I won't go there. Heavens, you can go there as much as you want. I live in Graz. Really? Yes. What's so astonishing about that? You're married, aren't you? Whatever makes you think so. Oh, I'd like it better if you were single. But you're married, I know. Well, tell me, uh, what makes you think so? Oh, if a man says he doesn't live in town, and he hasn't always got time... Well, that isn't so unlikely, is it? I don't believe it. And it wouldn't give you a guilty conscience to seduce a married man? Make him unfaithful? Never mind about that. I bet your wife is no different. Well, that's enough. Such observations. I thought you didn't have a wife. Whether I have a wife or not, such observations are beyond the pale. But, C Carl, Carl, isn't it? Um, are you mad? Look, I didn't know you were married. I was just gabbing. Come on. Let's be friends. You really are strange creatures. You women. At her side, he begins to caress her again. No. Don't. And it's too late. Now listen to me. We must have a, a serious talk. I want to see you again, many times. Honest? But if so, it's essential. I must be able to rely on you. I, I can't be watching you all the time. Oh, I can look after myself. You're, uh, well, not inexperienced exactly, but you're young. And men in general are unscrupulous, are an unscrupulous bunch. And how? Well, I don't mean just in morals. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> now, really, what sort of girl do you take me for? So if you, you want to love me, only me will be able to fix things up somehow, even if I do live in Graz. This place isn't the right thing. Someone could come up and at any moment... The next time, let's make it somewhere else, okay? Okay. Where we can't be disturbed. Right. The rest we can talk over on the way home. He gets up, opens the door. Waiter! The check! The Little Miss and the Poet, a small room comfortably furnished in good taste. Drapes leave it in semi-darkness. Red net curtains, a big desk littered with papers and books. Against the wall, an upright piano. The Little Miss and the Poet enter together. The Poet locks the door.
poets on mute. Here we are, sweetheart. He kisses her. Hmm. Oh, what a nice room. Only you can't see anything. <laughs> Your eyes will have to get used to semi-darkness. These sweet eyes. Oh, these sweet eyes won't have time to get used to it. How's that? Mm. Because I can't stay for one minute. More than do, one minute. Do take your hat off. For one, one minute. And your cloak. Oh, what are you up to? I've got to go. First, you must rest. We've been walking for three hours. We were in the carriage. Coming home, yes. But in Vildling and Bach, we were three solid hours on foot. No, do sit down wherever you like. At the desk. No, no, that is uncomfortable. Sit down on the sofa uh, here. <laughs> if you're very, if you're very tired, you can stretch out like this with your little head on the cushion. <laughs> but I'm not a bit tired. <laughs> you think you aren't. Right. And now if you feel sleepy, you can go to sleep. I'll keep perfectly quiet, or I can play your lullaby. One of my own. He goes to the piano. Your own? Yes. But, Robert, I thought you were a doctor. How's that? I told you I was a writer. Well, writers are doctors, aren't they? Of philosophy? Not all writers. Not me, for instance. Why did you bring that up? Because you said the piece you were going to play was your own. Oh, well, um, maybe it isn't. It doesn't matter, does it? Uh, it never matter who's done a thing just so long as it's beautiful. You agree? Oh, sure. As long as it's beautiful. Do you know what I meant by that? By what? What I just said now. Mm, oh, sure. You didn't understand a word. Now, look, I'm not that stupid. Of course you are. That's why I love you. It's a fine thing for women to be stupid. In your way, that is. Hey, don't be rude. Li little angel, isn't it nice just to lie there on a soft Persian rug? Mm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Won't you go on playing that piano? I'd rather stay with you. Look, can't we have the light on? Oh, no. Twilight is so comforting. Today we were bathing in the sunshine all day long. Now we've come out of the bath, so to speak, and we're wrapping the twilight around us like a bathrobe. <laughs> no, no, it'll have to be put a little differently, won't it? Um... I don't know. It's divine stupidity. He takes out a notebook and writes a few words in it. What are you doing? What are you writing down? Sun, bath, a white light, robe. That's it. He puts the notebook in his pocket. <laughs> and now, now tell me, treasure, wouldn't you like something to eat or drink? I guess I'm not thirsty, but I am hungry. Mm. No, I'd rather you were thirsty. The cognac's right here, but if it's food, I'll have to go out and get it. Can't they bring it up for you? That's the difficulty. My meat isn't around anymore. <laughs> Never mind. I'll go. Uh, what would you like? It isn't worth it. I've got to get home anyways. Uh, oh, no, 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 you don't. Uh, I'll tell you what. When we leave, we'll go and have supper somewhere. I haven't got time. And where would we go? What have you seen? You know so many people. It's enough to know if one of them sees us, the damage would be done. What damage? What do you think? If my mother heard anything, I'd be... We could go to a place where nobody could see us. Uh, they are restaurants with private rooms, after all. Have you ever been to a private dining room? As a matter of fact, I have. Hmm. Who was the lucky man? Oh... Uh, it wasn't what you think. I was with my girlfriend and her fiancé. They took me. Really? Am I supposed to believe that? Suit yourself. Did you blush? <laughs> it's gotten dark in here. I can't make out your features. 
Even so, I recognize you. Well, take care you don't mix me up with another girl. Peculiar, I can't remember what you look like. Thank you very much. Do you know, it's rather spooky. I, I can't visualize your face. In a certain sense, I've already forgotten you. Now, if I couldn't recognize your voice either, what, what would you be? So near and yet so far. Rather spooky. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? No, oh, nothing, Angel, nothing. <laughs> Where are your lips? <laughs> Won't you put the lights on? Tell me if you love me. Oh, I do. I do. Have you ever loved anyone else as much? I told you I haven't. But... Oh. Well, he, he was my fiancé. I'd rather you didn't think of him. Oh. Whoa, what, what are you doing? Now look. Let's imagine we're in a castle in India. I'm sure people there couldn't be as badly behaved as you. How idiotic, divine. If only you had an inkling of what you mean to me. Well, what? Don't push me away all the time. I'm not doing anything. Listen. Yes. Oh, listen, my, my corset hurts. Take it off. Okay, but you mustn't be so naughty. Okay. Little Miss rises and takes off her corset in the dark. Tell me, doesn't it interest you at all to know my last name? Oh, yes. What is it? I'd better not tell you my name. I'll tell you what I call myself. Um, what's the difference? Well, I call myself as a writer. You don't write under your real name? The poet close to her. Ah, uh, please, don't. Oh, the sweet odor that rises from you. He kisses her bosom. You're tearing my kameez. Off with it all, away with these superfluidities. Robert! Let's enter our Indian castle. First, first, tell me you really love me. I worship you. He kisses her hotly. My treasure, I worship you. My springtime, my... Robert. Robert. The aftermath. They are both lying on the couch. It's a bit awkward. That was really supernatural. I call myself... Robert. Oh, Robert. I call myself Beavitz. Why do you call yourself Beavitz? Beavitz isn't my name, it's what I call myself. Do you know the name? No. You don't know the name Beavitz? <laughs> How divine, really. But you're just pretending. Cross my heart, I've never heard it. You never go to the theater? Mm, oh, yes. Just the other day, I got taken by my girlfriend's uncle and my girlfriend, and we were at the opera, Galveria Rustacana. Hmm. But you don't go to the Berg Theater. Nobody ever gives me tickets for that. I'll send you a ticket one day soon. Oh, please don't forget. Make it something funny. Yes. Funny. Well, um, you wouldn't like something sad? Not really. Even if it's by me? A play? By you? You write for the theater? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Just want to light a candle. I <laughs> haven't seen you since you became mine. Hey. It's a candle. Don't. I... 
I feel ashamed. <laughs> Give me my blanket anyway. Later. He walks up to her with the light and contemplates her for a long while. Robert! You're beautiful. You are beauty. You are nature herself, perhaps. You are sacred simplicity. Ouch! You're dripping wax on me. Why can't you be more careful? You're what I've been looking for all this time. You love me, just me. You'd love me the same if I were a shop assistant. It does me good. I'll confess that up till now, I wouldn't get rid of a... I couldn't get rid of a certain suspicion. D tell me, hadn't you the least idea I was Beebitz? Look, I don't know what you want from me. I don't know any Beebitz. Such is fame. <laughs> Never mind. Forget what I told you. Forget even the name I told you. I'm Robert for you, and I want to remain Robert. I was joking. I'm not a writer at all. I'm a shop assistant. In the evenings, I play the piano for folk singers. Now you have me all mixed up. And the way you look at a girl, what's the matter? I mean, what, what's eating you? What's it's eating you? Strange. It's hardly ever happened to me, my treasure. I, I feel like crying. You've got under my skin. Let's stay together, hmm? We're going to love another one. We're going to love one another very much. Listen. Is that true about the folk singing? Yes, but don't ask anymore. If you love me, don't ask. Tell me. Could you make yourself quite free for a couple of weeks? What do you mean, quite free? Well, uh, away from home. What the? What would I? Mother say. Anyway, everything would go wrong at home without me. I've been thinking how lovely it would be to live with you for a few weeks quite alone somewhere in distant solitude, in the depths of nature's forest. Nature, in nature, and then one day, farewell to God knows whither. Now you're talking about saying goodbye. Then I thought you liked me. That's just it. Sweet creature. Hold me tight. I'm cold. It's time to get dressed. Wait, I'll light some more candles. Don't look. No. Tell me, darling. Are you happy? How do you mean? In general, I mean, are you happy? Things could be better. You don't understand me. You've told me quite enough of the state of affairs at home. I know you aren't exactly a princess. I, I mean, setting all that aside, when you're just feeling alive, do you, by the way, feel you are really alive? You got a comb? The poet goes to the dressing table and gives her the comb, contemplating the little mess. God, you're enchanting to look at. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> Come. Stay here with me a little longer. Stay and but it's let me much get something for our supper. And... It's much too late. It's not nine yet. Well, then, I've really got to hurry. But when shall we meet next? Um, when would you like to see me? Tomorrow. Um, what's tomorrow? Saturday. Oh, I, I can't make it. I've got to go see our, our guardian with my little sister. Uh, Sunday, then. Hmm. Sunday, on Sunday. I, I must explain something to you. I'm not Beebitz. Beebitz is a friend of mine. One day, the, I'll introduce you to him. His play is on this Sunday. I'll send you a ticket, and then I'll come pick you up from the theater. You'll tell me how you like the play, won't you? This Beebitz thing, uh... Well, I may be stupid, but... When I know how you felt about the play, I'll really know you. Okay. I'm ready. Let's go then, my treasure. 
They leave. The poet and the actress. A room in a country inn. It is an evening in spring. Meadows and hills are lit by the moon. The windows are open. All is still. The poet and the actress enter. As they come in, the flame of the candle which the poet is carrying goes out. Oh! What's the matter? The candle. <laughs> but we don't need it. Look, it's quite light. Marvelous. The actress suddenly sinks on her knees at the window, folding her hands. What's the matter with you? What are you doing? <laughs> Can't you see I'm praying? Do you believe in God? Mm, what do you think I am? An anarchist? Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Come here. Kneel down beside me. You could do with some praying once in a while, you profligate. And do you know to whom I was praying? To God, I presume. <laughs> oh, yes. It was to you I prayed. Then why look out the window? Tell me where you've dragged me off to, seducer. It was your idea. You wanted to go to the country. You wanted to come here. Well, wasn't I right? Yes, it's enchanting. You think it's only two hours from Vienna and perfect solitude. What mm. a landscape. Isn't it? You could write poetry here, if you happen to have any talent. Have you been here before? Have I been here before? I lived here for years. With whom? Oh, well, with Fritz, of course. I see. I worship that man. You've said that already. Oh, well, I beg your pardon. I can leave if I bore you. You bore me? <laughs> you have no idea what you mean to me. You're a world in yourself. You're the divine spark. You're genius. You are... The truth is your sacred simplicity. <laughs> yes, you. But you shouldn't talk about Fritz now. Well, he was an aberration, yes. <sighs> oh, well. It's good you see that. Come over and kiss me. The poet kisses her. <laughs> And now, we're going to say good night. Goodbye, my treasure. What do you mean? I'm going to bed. Yes, that's all right, but this good night business, where am I going to sleep? I'm sure there are other rooms in this inn. For me, the other rooms have singularly little attraction. By the way, I'd better light, uh, light up, hadn't I? Yes. The poet lights the candle. What a pretty room. They are religious here, but nothing, nothing but saints pictures. Wouldn't it be interesting to spend some time among these people? Another world, how little we know of our fellow men. Oh, stop talking bosh and give me my pocketbook, will you? It's on the table. Here, my one and only love. The actress takes from the pocketbook a small framed picture and puts it on the bedside table. What's that? Our Lady. I beg your pardon? The Blessed Virgin. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> you never travel without it. Never. It's my mascot. Now go, Robert. What sort of joke is this? Don't you want me to help you? I want you to go. Will you ever take me back? <sighs> perhaps. When? Oh, perhaps in 10 minutes. Darling, see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> and where will you be? I shall walk up and down in front of the window. I love to walk at night in the open air. I get my best ideas that way, especially when you're nearby, wafted by your longings, as it were, floating on your art. 
Oh, you talk like an idiot. <laughs> Someone might have said, like a poet. Now go. And don't start anything with the waitress. The poet departs. The actress undresses. She listens to the poet going down the wooden stairs and then to his steps beneath the open window. As soon as she is undressed, she goes to the window, looks down, sees him standing there. She calls to him in a whisper. Come. The poet comes up in a hurry, rushes to her. In the meantime, she has gone to the bed and put out the light. He locks the door. Well. Now you may sit by me and tell me a story. Shouldn't I close the window? Aren't you cold? Oh, no. What would you like me to tell you? Tell me who you are being unfaithful to at this moment. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not being unfaithful <laughs> yet. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm being unfaithful, too. You can imagine. And who do you think it is? Oh, my dear, I wouldn't have a notion. <laughs> well, guess then. Wait a moment. Uh, well, your producer. My dear, I'm not a chorus girl. Oh, it was just an idea. Well, guess again. Your leading man, Benno. <sighs> That man doesn't like women, didn't you know? He's having an affair with the mailman. Who would have thought it? So come and kiss me. The poet embraces her. <laughs> mm. What are you doing? Don't torture me like this. Listen, Robert, I'll make a suggestion. Get in bed with me. I accept. <laughs> oh, hurry up, hurry up. Well, if I had my way, I'd have been listen. <laughs> what? The crickets are chirping outside. Oh, you must be mad, my dear. There are no crickets in these parts. But you can hear them. Oh, come on. Here I am. Mm, and now lie still. Uh, uh, don't move. What's the idea? I suppose you'd like to have an affair with me. I hmm? thought you might realize that sooner or later. Oh, a lot of men would. But this particular moment, the odds are rather strongly in my favor. Come, my cricket. From now on, I'm going to call you cricket. Fine. <laughs> now, who am I deceiving? Hmm? Me, maybe. Ah! <gasps> My cricket! You should have your head examined. Or maybe someone. You've never seen. Someone you don't know. He's meant for you, but you can never find him. <sighs> cricket, don't talk such fantastic rot. It's strange. Even you, and <laughs> one would have thought. But no. It would just be spoiling all that's best about you if one come 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 well that's better than acting in damn silly plays you agree well i think it's good that you occasionally act in reasonable ones <laughs> meaning yours you conceited pup of course it really is a wonderful play you see you're a genius. By the way, why did you cancel your performance two nights ago? There was nothing wrong with you. I wanted to annoy you. Why? What had I done to you? You were conceited. Ugh, in what way? Everybody in the theater says so. Really? But I told them that man has a right to be conceited. And what did they say to that? Well, what should those people say? I never speak to them. Hmm. I see. They'd like to poison me. But they won't succeed. Don't think of them. Just be happy we're here 
and tell me you love me. You need further proof? Oh, that, fine, that kind of thing can't be proved. Well, that's great. <laughs> what more do you want? How many others did you try to prove it to this way? And did you love them all? Oh, no. I loved only one. My. Fritz. My name is Fritz. What am I to you if it's Fritz you're thinking of? A whim. Nice to know. Tell me, aren't you proud? Why should I be proud? Well, I think you have some reason. Oh, because of that? Yes, because of that, my pale cricket. How about the chirping? Are they still chirping? All the time, can't you hear? I can hear, but that's frogs, my child. You're wrong. Frogs croak. Well, certainly they croak. But not here, my dear child, this is chirping. You are the most pig-headed creature I've ever come across. Kiss me, frog. Please don't call me that. It makes me nervous. Oh, what do you want me to call you? Hmm? I've got a name. Robert. Oh, well, that's too dull. I must ask you to call me simply by my name. All right. Robert, kiss me. Mm. She kisses him. The aftermath. The bed is a mess and the actress is bored. Are you content now, frog? <laughs> May I light myself a cigarette? Hmm. Give me one. The poet takes the cigarette case from the bedside table, takes out two, lights both, and hands one to her. Um, by the way, you never said a word about how I did last night. Doing what? Well. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I wasn't at the theater. I guess you like to joke. Not at all. When you canceled your performance the day before yesterday, I assumed that yesterday you couldn't be in full possession of your powers, so I preferred to abstain. You missed something. Indeed. I was sensational. <laughs> People turned pale. You could see them. Benno said to me, you were a goddess, darling. Mm. And so sick one day earlier. Yes. And do you know why? Out of longing for you. You just told me you canceled the performance to annoy me. What do you know of my love for you? That sort of thing leaves you cold. I was in a fever for nights on end with a temperature of 105. A high temperature just for a whim. A whim, you call it? I die for love of you, and you call it a whim? What about Fritz? What about him? What about him? Don't talk to me about that, that cheap crook. The actress and the count. The actress's bedroom luxuriously furnished. It is noon. The blinds are still down. On the bedside table, a burning candle. The actress is lying in her four poster. Numerous newspapers are strewn about on the covers. The count enters in the uniform of a captain of dragoons. He stops at the door, reluctant to come in. It's you, count. Your good mother gave me permission, or of course I... God. Oh, no, please come right in. I kiss your hand. <laughs> uh, 
uh, uh, um, a thousand pardons coming straight in from the street, you know. I can't see a thing. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, here we are. I kiss your hand. <laughs> oh. oh, sit down, my dear Count. Your mother said you went very well, Fraulein. Nothing too serious, I hope. Oh, nothing serious? I was dying. Oh, dear me, not really. In any case, it's very kind of you to trouble to call. Dying? And only last night you played like a goddess. It was a, a great triumph, I believe. Colossal. People were absolutely knocked out. As for myself, well... Oh, well, thanks for the lovely flowers. Oh, not at all, Fraulein. Last night you were positively strewn with flowers and garlands. <laughs> but I left them all in my dressing room. Your basket was the only thing I brought home. Oh, you're very kind. The actress suddenly takes his hand and kisses it. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't be afraid, Count. It commits you to nothing. You are a strange creature. A puzzle, one might almost say. Uh, Fraulein Birkin is uh, easier to solve. Oh, little Birkin is no puzzle, though I know her only superficially. Oh, indeed. Oh, believe me, but you are a problem. And I've always longed for one. As a matter of fact, last night I realized what a great pleasure I'd been missing. You see, it was the first time I've seen you act. Is that true? Oh, yes. You see, Fraulein, it's a, uh, a big problem with the theatre. I'm used to dining late. By the time I get there, the best part of the play is over, isn't it? <laughs> well, you have to dine earlier from now on. Uh, I thought of that. Or not dining at all. There's not much pleasure in it, is there? Dining. Oh. Well, what do you still find pleasure in, young fogey? I sometimes ask myself. But I'm no fogey. There must be another reason. You think so? Yes. For instance, <laughs> always says, I'm a philosopher. What he means is, I think too much. Lulu? A friend of mine. Oh, well, he's right. It is a misfortune, all that thinking. Well, I have time on my hands. That's why I think, you see, Fraulein, when they transferred me to Vienna, I thought it would be better. I'd be amusing, uh, stimulating. It'd be the city. But it's really much the same here as up there. And where is up there? Well, well, down there, Fraulein, in Hungary, the small towns I used to be stationed in. Now, what were you doing in Hungary? I'm telling you, dear lady, the army. But why did you stay so long in Hungary? Oh, well, it happened, that's all. <laughs> enough to drive anyone mad i should think oh i don't know in a way you have more to do there than here you know fraulein training recruits uh, exercising horses and the surroundings aren't as bad as people say it's really rather lovely the big plain there such a sunset oh, it's a pity i'm not a painter i often thought i'd paint one if i were a painter we had a man in our regiment, young Splaney, and he could do it. Why I tell you this boring stuff, I don't know, Fraulein. Please, Count, I'm highly amused. You know, Fraulein, it's so easy to talk to you. Lulu told me it would be. It's a thing one doesn't often meet. In Hungary? Or in Vienna. People are the same everywhere. Where there are more, it gets overcrowded, but that's the only difference. Tell me, Fraulein, do you like people? Really? <laughs> like them? I hate them. <laughs> oh. 
I don't want to see them. I never do see them. I, I'm always alone. <laughs> this house is deserted. Just as I imagined. You are a misanthropist. It's bound to happen with artists moving in that more exalted sphere. Well, it's all right for you. At least you know why you're alive. Oh, well, who told you that? But I haven't the remotest idea why I'm alive. Not really, Fräulein. <laughs> Famous? Celebrated? But is that happiness? Happiness? Happiness doesn't exist. None of the things people chatter about really exist. Love, for instance. It's the same with love. You may be right there. Enjoyment. Intoxication. There's nothing wrong with them. They're real. I enjoy something all right, and I know I enjoy it, or I'm intoxicated all right. Uh, that's real too. And when it's over, it's over. That's all. It's over. Uh, but as soon as you don't, uh, I don't know quite how to say it, as soon as you stop living for the present moment, as soon as you think of later on or earlier on, well, the whole thing collapses. Later on is sad, and earlier on is uh, uncertain. In short, you just get mixed up. Don't you think so? You suck out the heart of the mystery, my dear Count. And you see, Fraulein, once you're clear about that, it doesn't matter if you live in Vienna or on the Hungarian plains or in the tiny town of Steinemanger. For example, where can I put my cap? Oh, oh okay. um, what were we talking about? The tiny town of Steinemanger. Oh, yes. Well, as I was saying, there isn't much difference. Whether I spend the evening at the casino or the club is all one. How does this tie in with love? Well, if a man believes in it, there'll always be a girl around who loves him. Oh, well, Fräulein Bergen, for example. Honestly, dear lady, I can't understand why you're always mentioning little Birkin. <laughs> well, she is your mistress, after all. Who says that? Oh, everyone knows. Except me. Remarkable. But you fought a duel on her behalf. Possibly I was shot dead and didn't notice. <laughs> oh, Count, you are a man of honor. Sit a little closer. Oh. If I may. <laughs> Here. She draws oh. him closer and runs her fingers through his hair. I knew you would come today. Really? Why? Well, I knew it last night at the theater. Oh, could you see me from the stage? My dear man, didn't you realize I was playing for you alone? How could that be? After I saw you in the front row, I was walking on air. Because of me? I'd no idea you'd noticed me. Oh, you can drive a woman to despair with that dignity of yours. Fräulein. Fräulein? Oh, well, at least take your saber off. Oh. Permit me. Uh. <laughs> now, kiss me, finally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. oh, I wish I'd never set eyes on you. No, no, it's better as it is. Count? You are a poseur. I am? Why? Many a man would be happy to be in your shoes right now. I am very happy. 
Oh, well, I thought happiness didn't exist. Hmm. Why do you look at me like that? I believe you are afraid of me, Count. I told you, Fraulein, you're a problem. Oh, don't bother me with philosophy. Come here and ask me for something. You can have whatever you'd like. Oh, oh you're too handsome. Well, then I beg leave to return tonight. Tonight? But, but I'm playing tonight. After the theatre. You ask for nothing else? I'll ask for everything else after the theatre. Then you can ask, you wretched poser. You see, Fräulein, you see, my dear, we've been frank with each other until now. I'd find it all much nicer in the evening, after the theatre. It'll be so much more comfortable. Oh, at present, you see, I have the feeling the door's going to open at any moment. Oh, this door doesn't open from the outside. Uh, Fraulein, wouldn't it be frivolous to spoil something at the start, when it might just possibly turn out to be beautiful? Just possibly? Well, I, and to tell the truth, I find love in the morning pretty frightful. <laughs> oh, you're the craziest man I've ever come across. Well, I'm not talking about ordinary females. After all, in general, it doesn't matter. But... Women like you, Fräulein, no. You can call me a fool as often as you like, but women like you, well, one shouldn't have them before breakfast. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and so, well. God, God, you're sweet. Now you see I'm right, don't you? What I have in mind. Tell me what you have in mind. Uh, what I mean is, uh, I'll wait for you after the theatre, in my carriage, and we can drive off somewhere, well, and have supper and... Uh... I am not Fraulein Birkin. Oh, I didn't say you were, my dear. Only one must be in the mood. I get in the mood at supper. It's lovely to drive home after supper and then... And then? Let events take their natural course. Come closer. Mm, closer. <laughs> I must say, <laughs> the perfume that comes from these pillows. Mignolette, is it? Oh. Oh. It's hot in here, don't you oh. think? The Count bends down and kisses her throat. Oh, my dear Count, this isn't on your program. Who says so? I have no program. It is hot. <laughs> you find it so? And dark, like evening. It is evening, Count. It's night. Now, shut your eyes if it's too light for you. Come. Come. The Count no longer defends himself. The aftermath. The actress is pleased. The Count is conflicted. Oh, now what's that about being in the mood, you poser? You're a little devil. Count. <laughs> All right, a little angel. And you should have been an actor. Really? <laughs> oh, you understand women. Do you know what I'm going to do now? Uh, well? Mm. I'm going to tell you 
I never want to see you again. Why? You're too dangerous for me. You turn a woman's head. <laughs> And now you stand there as if nothing has happened. But the... I beg you to remember, my dear Count, that I've just been your mistress. Can I ever forget it? Mm -hmm. So, how about tonight? What do you mean, exactly? Well, you intended to meet me after the theatre. Oh, yes. All right. Let's say, uh... The day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow? <laughs> no, we were talking of tonight. Oh, there wouldn't be much sense in that. Foggy? Oh, <laughs> you misunderstand me. I mean, how should I say? From the um, spiritual viewpoint. My dear Count, it's not your spirit that interests me. Believe me, it's all part of it. I don't agree that these things can be kept separate. Oh, don't talk philosophy at me. When I want that, I read books. But we never learn from books. Well, that's true. And that's why you'll be there tonight. We'll come to an agreement about the spiritual viewpoint, you old rascal. Then... With your permission, I'll uh, wait with my carriage. You'll wait here, in my apartment. After the theatre. Of course. Oh. The Count buckles on his sabre. What are you doing? Uh, I, I think it's time for me to go, Fräulein. I've been staying rather long as it is for a formal visit. Well, it, it won't be a formal visit tonight. You think not? Just leave it to me. And now give me one more kiss, little philosopher. Here, you seducer, you sweet thing. <laughs> you spiritualist, you polecat, you... <laughs> After several emphatic kisses, she emphatically pushes him away. Oh. My dear Count, it was a great honor. I kiss your hand, Fraulein. <laughs> Au revoir. Adieu, tiny little town of Steinemanger. She waves at him as he closes the door. She sighs happily. <sighs> the Count and the Whore. Morning towards six o'clock. A mean little room with one window. The dirty yellow blinds are down. Frayed green curtains. A chest of drawers with a few photographs on it. And a cheap lady's hat. In conspicuously bad taste. Several cheap Japanese fans behind the mirror. On the table, covered with a reddish cloth, stands a kerosene lamp, still feeb feebly and odorously alight, with a yellow paper lampshade. Next to the lamp, a, judge, a jug with a little leftover beer and a half-empty glass. On the floor by the bed, untidy feminine clothing, apparently thrown off in a hurry. The whore is asleep in the bed, breathing evenly, on the sofa lies the Count, fully dressed and in a light overcoat. His hat is on the floor by the head of the sofa. <sighs> However did I get... Oh. So I did go home with that female. Why? Oh. Oh, here she is. To think what can still happen to a man of my age. Oh, I don't remember a, a thing. Did they carry me up? No, no. I remember seeing uh, when I got into the room. Yes, yes. I, I was still awake then. Or I woke up or, uh, or perhaps it's only the room that reminds me of something. 
Oh, upon my soul, yes, I saw it last night. That's it. Last night, indeed. A few hours ago, I knew something had to happen. Yesterday, when I started drinking, I felt that. And what happened? Nothing. Or did I... Uh... Oh, upon my soul. The last time I couldn't remember was... Ten years ago. Thing is, I was drunk. If only I knew when it started. I remember exactly going into that whore's cafe with Lulu. Yeah. And, uh, no, no. First we left the satyr, and then on the way it started. Now I've got it. I was driving in my carriage with Lulu. Silly to rack my brains. It's all one. It'll, I'll be on my way. Oh, she sleeps soundly, that one. I can't remember a thing. But I'll put the money on her bedside table and uh, goodbye. <sighs> if one didn't know what she is. I've known quite a lot of girls who didn't look so virtuous even in their sleep. Upon my soul. Now, Lula would say I'm philosophizing, but it's true, sleep does make us all equal. It seems to me, like his big brother, death. <sighs> I'd like to know if... Uh... No, no, after all, it's that's something I'd remember. No, no, I dropped down on the sofa right away and uh, nothing happened. <sighs> it's incredible how women can all look alike. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. It goes to the door. Oh. Um, there's that. Uh, yeah. He takes out his wallet and is about to get a bill when the whore wakes up. <clears throat> Who's in here so early? Um, hey. Uh, good morning. Uh, Slept well? Yeah. Come here. Little kiss. I was just going. Going? Well, it's time, really. You want to go like this? Uh, well, uh... so long, then. Come back and see us. Uh, yes. Uh, goodbye. Uh, don't you want to shake hands? Uh, the whore pulls her hand from under the blanket and offers it. <laughs> oh, as if you were a princess. Anyway, if uh, one only... Um... Why do you look at me like that? If one only sees the head as now, when they wake up, they, they all look innocent. Oh, my soul. One could really imagine all sorts of things if the place didn't reek so of kerosene. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, that lamp's a pest. <laughs> How old are you, actually? Well, what do you think? Twenty-four. Oh, sure. <laughs> Older? And how long have you been... Uh... In the business? A year. Oh, you did start early. Did I? Better too early than too late. Well, tell me, are you happy? What? Well, I mean, how's it going? Well? Oh, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing all right. I see. Tell me, did it ever occur to you to do something uh, different? What could I do? 
Well, you're a pretty woman. After all, you could have a lover, for instance. Think I don't? I know, but I mean one, you know, one lover who keeps you so you don't have to go with just any man. I don't go with just any man. Hmm. I can't afford to be choosy. Thank goodness. Hmm. Hmm. Next month, we're moving into town. The Spiegel gasped. We? Who? Oh, the madam and a couple of the other girls. There are others here? In the next room. Can't you hear? That's Millie. She was at the cafe, too. Somebody's snoring. <laughs> That's Millie, all right. She'll snore all day till 10 in the evening. Then she'll get up and she'll go to the cafe. Oh, but that's an appalling sort of life. You said it. And the madam gets so fed up with her. I'm always on the streets at 12 noon. What do you do on the streets at 12 noon? What do you think? I'm on my beat. Oh, yes, I see, of course. <laughs> Well, goodbye. Going already? So long. Come again soon. Listen, tell me something. It doesn't mean a thing to you by now. What? I mean, you don't have fun with it anymore. I'm sleepy. <clears throat> it's all the same to you if a man is young or old or if he... Uh... What are you asking all this for? Well, for my soul. Now I know who you remind me of. It's... it's uh... So I look like somebody, do I? Incredible, quite incredible. Now, I beg you, please don't say a word for at least a minute. Exactly the same face. Exactly the same face. He suddenly um. kisses her on the eyes. Oh. But my soul, it's a pity you aren't uh, something else. You could make your fortune. You're like Franz. Who's Franz? Oh, the waiter at our cafe. How am I just like France? He always says I can make my fortune. And I should marry him. Why don't you? Thank you very much. I don't want no marriage. Not for anything. Maybe later. The eyes. Exactly the same eyes. Lulu'd certainly say I'm a fool, but... I'm going to kiss your eyes once more, like this. He kisses each eyelid and after a moment kisses her lips. She is surprised but reciprocates. It is the first true kiss of the evening. And now, goodbye. God bless you. I'm going. So long. Listen, tell me, aren't you a little bit um, surprised? Why? that I want nothing from you. There's a lot of men who don't feel like it in the morning. Well, yes. Really, it annoys me. I know such girls are interested in nothing but the money. Now, why do I say such girls? At least, it's nice she doesn't pretend. It's a relief. Or should be. Listen, I'll come again soon, you know. Good. When are you usually in? I'm always in. Just ask for Leocadia. Leocadia. Right. Well, goodbye. Uh. I've not got the wine out of my head yet. Isn't it the limit? 
I spend the night with one of those, and all I do is kiss her eyes because she reminds me of someone. Tell me, Leocardia, does it often happen that a man goes away like this? Like what? Like me. In the morning? No, I mean, has it occasionally happened that a man was with you and didn't want anything? No, that's... that's never happened. Well, what do you think is the matter? Do you think I don't like you? Why shouldn't you like me? Last night you liked me all right. Oh, I like you now, too. Last night you liked me better. What makes you think so? Don't talk silly. Last night? Tell me, didn't I drop down on the sofa right away? Sure you did. With me. With you? Sure. You don't remember. I... Uh, we... Uh, well... But you went to... You went to sleep right after. I went right off. I see. So that's how drunk I, it was. Yes. So, uh, you must have been good and drunk, if you can't remember. I see. All the same, there, there is a faint resemblance. Hmm. Goodbye. What's going on? The chambermaid started work. Look, give her something as you go out. The front door is open, so you save on the janitor. Oh, right. <laughs> So, it would have been beautiful if I'd only kissed your eyes. It would almost have been an adventure. Well, I suppose it wasn't to be. Oh, here. Good night. Oh, of course. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. The Count leaves. The horse smiles and goes back to sleep. The sun rises. Curtain. Oh, yay! That was so good. I loved it.